Dude, but look how pretty the gathering hub looks. Okay, I need to take a screenshot of this because this game is just too beautiful and I just cannot get over how pretty this game is. Oh my god, like look at this game, it's so beautiful. Okay, this, this is the view. This is the view right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm like, it feels like I'm traveling and I'm taking pictures IRL, but I'm just taking screenshots in a game, but I'm, I'm that person, you know? <laughs> oh my god, this, oh my god, let's take another screenshot because the sun is setting and it's so pretty and I cannot get over, oh my god, like, <gasps> look at this beautiful game like how can you not play this game dude like you're missing out if you're not playing this game i'm just i'm just a screenshot i have to like take a picture of this <laughs> this game is too pretty like i don't know i'm crazy i guess game looks not fun solo i actually love this game solo i'm pretty sure every person here has spent hours in this game solo it is definitely soloable i soloed like the first majority of it on stream it's so fun solo. It's just like one of those games where you really get to throw yourself at it. It's like really Im immersive and it makes you enjoy the grind and the progression. And if you honestly though, if you want friends to play with, please, 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 please join my discord. I literally have an entire community of Monster Hunter World people. I don't know why, like whenever I, whenever I stream Monster Hunter World, that's where I pick up like majority of my subs. I like swoop in, pick up Monster Hunter World viewers, bait them into thinking I'm a Monster Hunter World streamer. And then I just keep them and take them with me to other games. <laughs> That's what I do. I literally pick them up, kidnap them, and take them with me to other games. And then every time I come back to Monster Hunter World, they're like, Oh my god, this is why I followed you in the first place. Thank you so much. Well, that's not good. <gasps> <laughs> no, but seriously, if you want to start the game and you just need friends, just join my Discord. I'm pretty sure after today, there will be people who literally buy the original game and start and then try out Iceborne. And I'm so excited for you guys because this game is so good and you have like literally 48 hours of like good fun game that you can play. And honestly, just take the game slow. This game's a treasure and you should take it slow. It's not even an ad, I wish I was sponsored. You know how many people I've convinced to play this game? You can't get your friends to stick with this game, it's rough. Yeah, if your friends can't stick with this game, make new friends. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Well, it's okay, you can find new friends who play this game literally in my discord i am like it sounds like a discord ad but i get there's like nothing there's nothing i get really out of like convincing people to join my discord it's a good place to ask questions like you have math questions go ask my chat you got questions on coding ask my chat you can ask even like philosophical questions and i don't think i have a single philosophy major in my chat but like you guys can sit there and ponder together on what the answer is to like your current like college paper or whatever <coughs> so yeah join my discord oh yes it's only it's only for subs though i'm really sorry but once you're a sub and you join i will literally never kick you and it's like this library of like conversation and info you know and you will meet people new people like yourself all the time and don't be afraid mm -hmm. to talk to strangers oh hello mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, i'm just on my discord <laughs> yeah nice yeah i don't really, I'm, I'm just i'm just saying if you're lonely you should join my discord mm -hmm. <laughs> and make some friends make some mm -hmm. gaming buddies uh -huh. and it doesn't even matter if you like join my discord grab three people and like become eternal friends together and leave like i'm happy for you get what you can out of my discord yes Yes, because you know what? You know what you have in common to start with when you join my Discord? You watch my what stream. That? That's right. Yeah, that's right. You watch my that's stream. Right. We watch your stream. Yeah. And so you yeah. already have common Global ground. Have friends and we watch your stream. Let's yeah. Go. And you know what's common in my chat? Nobody's an asshole. And if they're an asshole, <laughs> they can apologize for being an oh. asshole. That's right. I expect you all to apologize if you're ever an asshole to another person. I love Volcano Fight because it's just so satisfying to listen to. Why did I choose Insect Glaive? Because, um, <laughs> actually, my thought process was is there any weapon that allows me to jump? Because I like jump, I like like aerial moves, and Insect Glaive was the only one that like allowed me to quote unquote like jump. 
And so I picked up the insect way. That was literally my reasoning. Did I even try other weapons? I really wanted to like bow, but I didn't like bow. It was too repetitive for me. Like too repetitive. And then I wanted to do like heavy bow gun and light bow gun, but I was so used to insect. Oh, oh, what? What? How oh, did he fall? Wait. I don't know. He just fell early. Yeah, I tried to like heavy bow gun and insect uh, light bow gun, but I was so used to insect glaive, I just like kind of stuck with it. And I think the only weapon I've really tried other than uh, insect glaive is hunting horn. I like hunting horn a lot. I just like insect glaive more, but I do like hunting horn. Oh my god, he's dying. How did I meet yeah, Ray? Uh, when she moved out, she asked me to move in with her. Or we knew each other before then, but um, we were like friends. We weren't like super duper close, but like we knew each other before just cause like we're in the same space and stuff. I was moving out with Arya and she was moving out with um, her and her ex. And then she just asked me to move in to take his spot i was like sure because like she need she like did really didn't want to leave her current apartment but she needed someone to live with and i was like okay and so that's how that's how ray and i came to be um closer and end up living together and then we lived together for like a couple of months and everything and then yeah. we decided to live with um iman and jen and all of us oh my gosh i was at the dentist today and they gave me like the weirdest mouthwash it it didn't like Obviously, it's not like Listerine mouthwash. It was like their like form of mouthwash, and like it tasted like not like water, but it was tasteless. But after I like spat it out, my mouth had this like like as if there was like cotton balls in my mouth for a while. That kind of like feeling, and like it's not vinegar. It doesn't taste like anything. It's like tasteless, but like. It like burned my mouth a little, but it also like salivated, but it wasn't like a cool refreshing kind of burn. It was like a weird kind of numbness. Yeah. Oh, it's fluoride. I don't know. I don't, I don't work out of, I don't, I don't, I've never really like looked through a dentist uh, equipment. Shit. Are you dead? But it was the weirdest mouthwash, mouth rinse experience ever. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I have to get my um, wisdom teeth removed because they're like coming out now and I'm terrified because I hate surgery. Like the idea of surgery just scares me even though I know the wis wisdom teeth surgery is like nothing. I've even had an appendectomy before. That was like my first um, surgery. My first and only surgery was my appendectomy. And that's even like, you know, more like scary, scarier than um, getting your wisdom teeth removed. But like just the idea of surgery is just so scary to me. I thought people get their wisdom teeth removed. Yeah, they do. A lot of people get them removed like in high school. Yeah, they like I got mine in high school. Yeah, I but I just I'm just a scared cat and I was trying to avoid it all my life. I was praying I don't have wisdom teeth, but I do. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I cannot talk and do this fight at the same time. Have you guys gotten an appendectomy? Have you guys gotten your appendix removed? That was so freaky to me. It was one of the freakiest things I got went through. I had so much pain randomly at like 1 a.m. in the night when I was in Korea. And I thought it was like a really bad cramp, like the worst cramp of my life. And so I just like bore through the pain. And I was like, I remember I was like texting my mom and I was like, oh my God, like I'm in so much pain. I, I think I'm just having really, really bad cramps. So she's like, oh no. And then like, like randomly she goes, by any chance is like your is it like more focused on your uh lower right side and i was like yeah it does anyway i stayed up till like 7 a.m in pain because i just couldn't go to sleep because of the pain and then i finally fell asleep and i woke up at 10 a.m again and my mom was like i think you should get that checked out with a doctor and so um me and my grandma walk over to like a local hospital and we get it checked out and he's like, um, with my equipment here, I can't really like tell what you have, but I think your like appendix is like for sure inflamed or like something's inflamed. So you need to go to like a bigger hospital where they have like the equipment to see what's going on in your body. 
And so I did that and we went right away to like a, a much bigger like college hospital and I got it scanned and they're like, oh yeah, your appendix is like inflamed and it's like on the verge of bursting. So you need to get surgery today. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I remember like, I thought the doctor was gonna tell me, yeah, you just like drank spoiled milk last night. And so you're just having really bad stomach ache. And I just remember that after hearing that, I was like freaking out. I was like, I've never had surgery before in my life. I am terrified of knives and blood and anything and the idea of it. And I, I was so scared. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you're gonna have to stay in the hospital and we'll try to get you like the earliest surgery like today, but you need it today. It's like, okay. And so they hospitalized me. And guess what? Um, the freaking hospital I was in, they didn't have any more like space in, cause like, you know, there's like wards. And so um, the ward that usually is for like, I don't know, like lighter surgery, I guess like lighter surgeries was um, full. So they put me in the cancer section of the ward, like cancer patients. And I felt so bad for like the people like I was like with, cause they just like ran out of space. Cause like, and so they like put me in like more emergency areas uh, for like surgery. And I remember just like the hospital bed next to me was like this lady who i don't know who had like way worse problems than me and like her her like family was like crying and i felt so bad and i felt just like i just felt really bad i was like just sitting there i'm like oh my god i'm freaking about my appendix this lady is freaking about about her lungs and i'm just like oh god the situation is so stressful and then anyway I remember I went to like sleep in the hospital bed at like 9 p.m. And I thought I was gonna get my surgery in the morning. So I slept. I get woken up at midnight because the surgeon says, the head surgeon says, he actually just wants to do my surgery before he goes home. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I'm just like, he just wants to like finish this job and go home instead of like just doing my surgery in the morning i mean that, that's cool like he just uh, it must be so simple for him if he just wants to like do it and go anyway wake up at midnight and i was like okay fine and the late and the nurse is like oh you have to take out all your piercings so i take out i had like my cartilage pierced then and i had a bunch of piercings i took them all out i take off my necklace and she's like okay and then wear this and i wore the little like patient thing where it's like it's like tied on the side so they can like, you know, like just like take it off without like taking it off. It's just like half and half. Anyway, I got on that. I got on a stretcher. The hospital is dead quiet. It is dark and it's scary. And I don't like hospitals because I watched a horror movie in high school about hospitals and it freaked me out. Anyway, the nurse is like rolling me down on the stretcher and my grandma is like next to her. And we finally go in front of like the surgery room and i'm just laying there freaking out <laughs> terrified of my life because like also oh my my grandma kept asking the doctor hey she's going to be okay right like the surgery is like super simple like it's not like life-threatening or anything right but like freaking the doctor refused to give my grandma like reassurance because of like that percent chance of like liability that the surgery does go wrong. They don't want to be liable for like having told that I would have been fine, but then I come out like not being fine. So he like could not verbally reassure my grandma. And so my grandma's freaking out because she's so worried for me. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to calm down my grandma. I'm trying to calm down myself. Anyway, I go in the surgery room and trust me, the surgery room, at least the one I went to in Korea looks nothing like the ones they do in dramas where it's like, like a cool blue light and a white light. And it's like a very clean minimalistic setting and it's like dark. No, the surgery room I went to was freaking yellow. There were like stuff everywhere, cabinets everywhere, machines everywhere, jars and tools and everything everywhere. It looked 
like a, like a storage room. It's like yellow as heck and it looks creepy. <laughs> I don't know, ratchet. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not ratchet, but like it looks ratchet to me because it doesn't look nothing like that it does in movies. Anyway, and they put me on and they're like, oh, here, you have to get on like this metal table. And I'm like, okay. So I get on the metal table and I'm laying there and they put the like anesthesia mask on me and they're like, okay, like tell us your name, tell us your birthday. And then like by the third question, I knocked out, obviously. I wake up post-surgery and holy crap, after anesthesia, like you, I didn't wake up with a mask or anything. I just like woke up like with nothing on me. And I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Korean hospitals are like cheaper. They didn't want to wake me up with like a mask or anything. So I wake up with nothing attached to me and I can't breathe. For like the life of me, I feel like I'm breathing through. Like, you know, those like coffee stirring sticks that you see at like, I don't know, coffee shops. There's like, they're stirring sticks, but they, but they have like a little bit of air hole to them. So they're like straws. I felt like I was breathing through one of those, like the most tiny little slim straw ever, like ever. It was like the slimmest straw ever. That's what it felt like I was breathing out of. I could barely breathe. And I was like, I woke up and I was like, kind of like freaking out in my head. I was like, wow, I've never like woke up like feeling like this. Like I'm like suffocating. And so I'm just like trying to breathe. And, my, and the nurse like sees that I woke up and we were still in like, I wasn't even back in my hospital bed. I was just in this like waiting room area where they were like, oh, it's like post-surgery finished patient like plopped waiting room kind of thing i wasn't even in back in my room and like she's like oh you're awake it's gonna be hard to breathe but you have to keep breathing just like focus on your breathing if you stop breathing right now your lungs are gonna collapse so you have to keep breathing and then she gets my grandma uh, and she's like make sure she keeps breathing because if she doesn't keep breathing her lungs are gonna collapse so make sure she stays awake to breathe and i'm just like listening to this and i'm like what she says this so like matter of factly like this is normal and i'm like okay i guess this is normal and so i'm just like for the next like two hours or three hours i'm just focusing on my breathing and i'm s oh I'm, they they like roll me back into my like patient room and I'm like in my hospital bed again. And I'm like staring at the clock, the analog clock. And it's, um, it was like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I realized like the surgery took like two and a half hours and whatever. Anyway, I'm like just like focusing okay. on my breathing the entire time, just staring at the analog clock. And my grandma, my grandma just like keeps checking in on me, be like, are you awake? Like, make sure you're breathing. Like, are you awake? Like, make sure you're breathing. And like, like 30 minutes in, she like falls asleep. <laughs> I'm just like laying there, like staring at the analog clock. I can't even like, I, I don't have like the capacity in me to like tell her I'm okay and breathe at the same time. <laughs> so I'm just like breathing and it's like 4 a.m. And then my grandma just starts like farting like crazy, <laughs> like in her sleep really loudly. And I'm just like listening to that, watching the clock, trying to breathe. <laughs> And like, it was just a mess. And like, it got to the point where like her fart like woke up, like not the patient next to me, but the patient's guest who was like sleeping there too. And like, I was just like, my God, like my brain is just chaos. I feel like I'm dying. I have to focus on my breathing. I'm so sleepy, but I can't go to sleep. I'm just staring at the clock. I'm listening to my grandma fart and I'm just trying to breathe. Anyway, by like 5 a.m., my breathing kind of like normalized and I could like, it was like harder to breathe, but it, it felt like way more doable. And I remember I like grabbed my phone. I told my mom, I got out of surgery at like 2 a.m. Like um, grandma fell asleep around like three. I've been just like trying to breathe ever since. And then I was like yelling at my mom. I was like, why didn't you tell me when you get out of like anesthesia? It's like freaking impossible to breathe. I remember after all that, like I finally like fell asleep. I could go to sleep. I woke up and my friend Rena visited me at the hospital. And when she came, the nurse came to, and I remember I was like covered in that, like, I don't know what to call it. I'm, I, have, I have no knowledge in the medical field, but when you do surgery, they put this like ointment on you. It looks like blood, honestly. It looks like dried blood, but it's not blood, but it's like orangey, reddish. 
Anyway, that was like all over my body because they didn't even like wipe me off. And so my my friend Rena wiped me off as she like wiped me down. And she just kept visiting like every day. And like she like walked when I could walk, which I couldn't walk for a bit. When I once I could start walking, they like had me like walk around like the hospital, like that floor, so I could get like used to like walking again or like making sure like my organs like fell back into place or whatever. Cause your organs have to like fall back into place after surgery and to do that you have to like walk it off like literally you just have to walk it off oh but i also lost like 15 pounds during that because like, i didn't like eat for a good amount of time and then i ate like hospital food i also couldn't i also didn't like poop for a week which is like really weird for me because i like poop twice a week or twice a week twice a day <laughs> and so that was that was an experience yep that's my that's my appendectomy story that's I just remember so vividly, like just everything. And I was just like, wow, like this is something that people go through. A lot of people go through. A lot of people have gotten appendicitis and got an appendectomy. And I did not know it was like that. And I, oh, I also remember like messaging like Iman about it because I think she, I think she she had she had an appendectomy too, and she's like, oh, it's not a big deal, like it's just like qu it's like quick and like it's like fine. And I'm just like I I I had like I a know. completely completely different experience. Like I I had a very stressful freak out experience with it. Was it painful? No, I mean like okay, like moving moving around was painful right after the surgery post-surgery it is so hard to move around guys like it is painful but anyway i enjoyed i enjoyed my little hospital bed where like you take the remote and it like folds in any way you want that was my highlight i was like oh i can make my back go up like this i can make it go up for my knees <laughs> and yeah that was it that's legit my only surgery experience so now that I think about getting like my wisdom teeth removed and I know it's like dental work and I've gone dental work before but the fact that it's like considered a surgery just has me like freaked out and stressed. Mm, and I remember being billed for that appendix. You had to do it like for the time. appendectomy and it was a crazy number and I was like freaking hospitals are so expensive and not even a but you know what if it was in the states it was probably way more expensive but I also didn't have health insurance. Or I didn't have health insurance in Korea for it, but it turned out I was working at Phoenix One at the time, and Phoenix One's health insurance actually covered that, and so I got to get like a good chunk of it paid off. Thank the Lord, because I was just like, oh my God, it's, it's freaking expensive. Yours was two to three k. Mine was like five plus k. It was like, I think it was like, it was like I don't remember. It was like five to seven k for the appendectomy, because because. Dude, anesthesia is so expensive. If you like look at the hospital bills and you see it like all separated, the anesthesia is really expensive. Anyway though, health insurance clutched and then it, it it paid off a good chunk. Thank the Lord. I have time for like one. Well, one is fine. Oh my God, I see Sidewinder. <laughs> Can I get one one support Carry main? Lord? Can I get one support main? I want one support main with me and Anne. Oh, I see. I see Blackfire. I remember Blackfire supports. What does it mean to be a support? There's a... Right now, there's like two ways you can support or two weapons you can support. Sword and Shield and Hunting Horn. Anyway, Hunting Horn is a weapon that gives you like buffs, like song buffs. So you get a lot of awesome buffs. Like there's like stamina, there's like more attack, more defense. And then there's like armor set abilities that allow you to basically there's a lot of stats in the game that you can get through armor and through decorations. Decorations are like jewel slots added onto your armor that allow you to kind of like build up a supportive skill set. And the supportive skill set is like one is called wide range where if you eat an item, the people around you also take effect of the item. So for example, if I'm if I'm dying and somebody eats like a potion for me, they heal my health. And so most supports will go that. And like there's something called like speed eating or fast eating or whatever it's called. And they it takes them way less time to like consume a potion than if I were to consume a potion. It's like practically instant. And then there's also something called free meal where it allows you to have like a higher percentage chance where you don't actually use up the consumption of the item. And that's usually like the core support build. Anyway, Safi is like a raid. And so there's like multiple lobbies going on who are fighting the exact same thing right now. 
And depending on how fast you take her down, you get like more rewards. See, is it a light speed? Yeah, it's easy to stay attacked on this up. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> I gotta go. But if you guys wanna play, like if you guys wanna go and do like Safi runs, go to my Discord, go to the Monster Hunter tab, and I'm sure somebody can create a session and you guys can be running Safi runs. So yeah. If you guys wanna continue the Safi runs, I would do that.